welcome. Uh, thank you to everybody who has joined us. Um, good evening or morning or afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Amy Carr. I am the Vice President of Recruiting for Worldwide Health Staff. And I am joined today by Jericho Eisen from Bayada. Jericho is the Director of Clinical Operations and Clinical Education with Bayada Home Healthcare. Um, and he's also a PT. And um, thank you, Jericho, for being with us. And we're excited to hear about your journey. So let me turn it over to Jericho. Hello, Amy. Hello, everybody. I say aloha. I'm here in the big island of Hawaii. And thank you for having me here today. And hello to everyone. And I'm here to talk about my journey. I'm a Filipino by background I'm here in the United States and working for Biata. I'll start with my story. <laughs> what is my story coming to the United States? You know, my story started, Amy, when I was in high school. Fourth year high school, I remember as a senior in the school, trying to figure out where I'm going, what career should I take? And during our career orientation, they invited a physical therapist from the United States. And I was just so like, wow, I want to go to the United States too. I want to do, become a physical therapist. So my journey started with that dream. So I went to school, get my degree. I processed what I need to process in terms of getting my license here in the United States, getting my English examination, my visa screen, all the works that I need to do. Once I have everything in place, I started looking for a company that will match my values and my opportunity to work here in the United States. That was in 2007. And just a few months after that one, here I am, got in the United States. I started my journey in Maryland as a traveling therapist and got my way to New Mexico as part of New Mexico, not Mexico, but New Mexico. I remember my dad will always say, you're ready in the United States, Ivo. Why are you going to Mexico? I said, no, it's New Mexico. It's part of the United States. And that's where my first career in the United States, working in a skilled nursing facility. That was in 2008, and here we are, 2023. I'm working with Beata as Director of Clinical Operations and Director of Clinical Education, and I'm based here in Hawaii. Um, what drew me to Beata? I, I think the, the most important for me is the culture. I mean, there's a lot of agencies uh, uh, worldwide, right? Even where I used to work, sometimes you, you just want to have that right fit for you. That, that you share those common values. Beata is a very culturally oriented organization. We, we believe that um, patients come first, but at the same time, employees are our greatest asset. We take care of the employees, they take care of me. And I think that's what makes me um, work with this company. And I already moved four states for this company. Amy, I started in New Mexico as a director in one of the office at Bayada. And then I moved to Colorado, in, uh, in, in Denver, Colorado for Bayada. Moved to Arizona for Bayada. And now I'm here in Hawaii. There's so much opportunity for uh, that this company offers. But then again, I think what makes me in love with this company is that culture. Not all agencies or uh, facilities, organization elsewhere meets my my core values and this are what we share and we'll talk about that later on today what my favorite thing you know, about living in the united states you know it is true that for for me who grew up in the philippines um the united states is really the land of honey and opportunities that's that's what, what I, I i always see uh as long as you are a hard worker as long as you're willing to do uh the, the things you need to do to get to where you want to be. I have my motto in life that says, um, no one knows how one far can go until you take the risk of going far. And the United States give us that opportunity. We just need to get there. We just need to try it, right? The United States is, is so, is humongous, right? And so tons of opportunity, um, 
As, as far as Korea is concerned, uh, that's what I love about the, the country. I love that um, every part of the United States has different seasons as well. You know, living in the Philippines, you only have basically two weathers, right? The, the dry and the wet, or sometimes the hot and the hot season. <laughs> so here you can choose like, do I want to be in the snowy area, experience the, one, the, the snow, and, and do I want to be in a more desert-like uh, uh, area? So there's a lot of uh, options as well uh, in the United States as far as uh, where do you want to live? What is a piece of advice uh, that I can give for any incoming international home health professionals? I think number one is we have to do our due diligence for someone who are not from the United States. You know, uh, do your research. Where do you want to be in the United States? What are the requirements to get to the United States? Um, if you want to be, let's say, in Hawaii, what, what's in Hawaii, right? Uh, what is the culture there in Hawaii? What uh, what will make me fall in love with that place? Because you're uprooting yourself, basically. Uh, you're leaving your family. You know, it will be great if you can bring your family with you. But, you know, at the beginning, you will probably be going by yourself first just to make sure everything's all good. So it is important to do your due research. Find an agency that is real. <laughs> Find the agency that will really help you out and, and, and sees you as as uh, someone that they want to help genuinely. Um, I have experience with and stories that I've heard that um, migrant workers or you know, uh, clinicians coming from different countries that were not treated right by agencies and companies. And so it is important that for us, we do our due diligence. Um, we have internet access now, check their website, check their reviews. And I think that's very, very important um, whenever you make your decision, when you are moving to the United States. Uh, what working in home health is really like. As a physical therapist or just in general as a home health provider, uh, prior to this career, I've worked in multiple settings. I've worked in the hospital setting, working in inpatient rehab, uh, I've actually taught in the university too for six years. Um, I did skilled nursing facility and I used to own two outpatient clinics here in the United States. But in the home health setting, there's a different satisfaction. And that is to be um, able to provide care in the patient's home. It's, it's different. Um, patient recovers better and faster when in their own comfort of their home. Nobody wants to be in the hospital and say, I'm going to go to the hospital for a vacation, right? <laughs> That's not a vacation. But everybody wants to go home. And it's an opportunity. It's a great privilege for a, a home health care professional to provide that care in the patient's home. You'll see how the patients uh, function inside the house. Uh, you know that, oh, wow, they're having trouble opening the refrigerator or they can't uh, wheel their wheelchair to the bathroom because the doors are told so narrow. No one of the patient is having UTI because they can't make it in the bathroom on time, right? Or you see that they put their medication bottles on top of the refrigerator and now the patient could not balance well. No wonder they're having medication errors. No wonder they're back in the hospital. So this is a great opportunity for us as healthcare provider um, to see the patient in action in their own home and making, helping them, equipping them to be successful in providing um, great help for themselves. We got to teach them to take care of themselves so that they don't go back to the hospital. They don't have to be in a rehab facility. They don't have to be in a skilled nursing facility. They can be at home safe. So that is me in a nutshell, <laughs> Amy. Yeah, so I think um, let's watch a video about Bayada, um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what uh, what home health care is and what it isn't. You know, when I was in nursing school, didn't really hear much about home care. The best thing is just to tell people. Home care is nursing in its entirety. The holistic care that you get to provide in home care was what I knew nursing to be. In a hospital, you have 
five different people that you have to call to manage different things with your patient. In home care, I learn all that stuff. The only things that I heard was that it was not very skill intensive. That your skill sets are gonna get rusty. False, I learn new skill sets. I get continuing education through bad all the time. I know how to work the ventilator. I know how to take care of the trach. I know how to crack an oxygen tank. I know how to work an Ambu bag. I can take care of you. Our care is so detailed that it's phenomenal. And that's the kind of stuff that people don't hear when they're in school. Oh, you're gonna go and you're gonna be, what, like a glorified babysitter? No, couldn't be further from the truth. Home care is a collaborative team approach to nursing, which I didn't know until I did it. This is why you became a nurse. You became a nurse to treat the whole system, the patient, the family, the illness, the, the doctors, you touch every aspect. A nurse in home care is like the hub of a wheel and you're in touch with every spoke of that wheel. And, and you have a chance in home care to make an enormous difference with the patient and the family and the other nurses. It's everything all wrapped up into one. All right. Jericho, tell us what, like, what is home health care? And then maybe also talk a little bit about what it's not and what people might be familiar with and they might think it might be. Right, right. I think I'll, I'll start with what is not, <laughs> right? Uh, home health care in general, it's not being a companion. You're not sending a person to watch a client, a patient for hours doing dishes let's say driving them to do shopping, do groceries, etc. Home health care is requiring skilled services to be provided by a skilled professional. So in this case, nurses, for example, home health care would mean only a licensed nurse can perform that task. And it's usually and most of the time for this setting, it's about 30 to 60 minutes of treatment. So what are skilled services, right? So if I'm a nurse, I'm there to educate the patient on their disease entity. Let's say they went, uh, went to the hospital and had a sepsis due to urinary tract infection. So my goal as a nurse in the home is to teach the patient and the caregivers and the family members on how to prevent that from happening again. My job too is to educate the patient on medication, right? What are these antibiotics for? What are the indications for this one? What are the side effects of this medication? And many more. The most important part here as a nurse and as a home healthcare professional is that we see a patient from head to toe. We're not just there because there's a wound on the elbow and we treat it. We're there to treat the wound and what can make the patient help them heal the wound faster, right? Well, I ask a team member, should I request a physical therapist in there to improve mobility and improve circulation in the area, right? If the patient, for example, have problems with diet and, and as a nurse, you want to improve, for example, increased protein intake so that the wound will heal faster, maybe we can include the dietitian. Just like what the video said. It is an interdisciplinary approach. It's just, it is a team approach of uh, a team of professionals, nurses in general, PT, OT, to make sure that this individual, this client who has been uh, stricken by illness can be successful in taking care of themselves in the home. Again, we are not companion care. We're not there to throw um, what uh, garbage <laughs> we're not there to pick up things from the grocery for our patient we're there to provide what we've learned and what we practice in the hospital in the school uh, as a skilled uh, practitioner skilled nurse and i think you know oftentimes people are very familiar with home care in the middle east and maybe there might even be people who watch this who have served as what is a nurse in home care in the Middle East? And it certainly is a job for nurses, but um, I think oftentimes people aren't always treated very well, and maybe not always with respect, um, and perhaps not necessarily treated 
as a nurse would be in a, in a professional situation. And this is very different than that. This is a job for acute care nurses that have good skills that families depend on for, for care in, in critical situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, if I'm a nurse, I, I head to a patient's home and I've noticed other conditions that need to be addressed, whether it's an environmental modification that we have to do, we do it as a nurse. Uh, if we have to train the caregivers on how to properly drape the wound or change the dressing of the wound, et cetera, that, that is what we need to do. Uh, we have, again, I would emphasize on uh, as a nurse, we use or our critical thinking when we provide advice and education and training for our patient. At the end of the day, the primary charge of a nurse and all those who work in a home health setting is to prevent rehospitalization. So if I'm a nurse, I went to a patient's home, my first thing is like, what will prevent this patient from going back to the hospital? Is it number one, is it, should we manage their medication correctly? Should we make sure that they're eating the right food considering let's say they have a heart condition or a kidney problem, et cetera. And also identifying the other members of the team. Should I consult with a speech language pathologist? Should I consult a social worker to help the family manage their financial issues that prevents them from getting the right food for this patient, et cetera. So the nurse plays a very important role in here. Um, just like what the video said, nurses are not glorified caregivers. We are skilled. You are a skilled uh, a professional, and we want to use that uh, skill in making that patient successful in their care of their own home health, in their own health in their home. Great. So, and also just to, for everyone who's joined us, um, if you haven't told us, we'd love to know where you're watching from. That's always fun. We'd love to know where around the world you are. Um, and as we hear from Jericho, feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, we'll take them at the end. So Jericho, tell us about Bayada as a company. Yes, absolutely. Bayada was founded in 1975 by Mark Bayada. You see the spelling is different, right? Bayada with an I versus the company with a Y. And just a uh, a, a good side note on that one, people cannot spell Miata with an I. So Mark Miata said, uh, decided like, let me spell it with a Y, like Bayada. <laughs> so that's how the name uh, started. But we are already in 22 states. Um, we are in seven countries and still growing. We started with one office in the East Coast and now we're over 380 plus offices nationwide and international. We provide different services. Home health is one. We do have hospice as well. We have pediatrics. We have habilitation. We have assisted care, etc. But this for this particular webinar, this is uh, a home health setting we're in. We only provide intermittent care, short-term care uh, for our patients in the home. In 2018, the end of the year, Biata, Mark Biata decided to make the company a nonprofit organization. That's another thing that I love about this company, right? Because he said that I want my legacy to last. I want to touch as many lives as I can through this company. You probably have heard that a lot of companies are selling themselves, merging themselves and getting dissolved, etc. This company, is not going to get to that point. It won't get sold because we're a nonprofit organization. We are being managed by a lot of a board of directors. And to be a nonprofit organization, that means that whatever the company makes profit, it's being invested back to the client, to the employees, to our technologies. It's not, it's no longer being put in the, the pocket of the owner of the company. That's why. That's one thing that I love about this company, because I know that they're really focused on investing um, in making sure that we provide the best care for our patient through the employees, through the technology that we're using. In 2023, just this year, we uh, were voted 
as one of America's greatest workplaces for women and for diversity by Newsweek. And this is just a few of our accolades. In many years, Beata also was also being mentioned under Glassdoor that we're one of the top 100 best place to work in the United States. Our CEO is one of the best CEO in the United States. We're not too far from Disneyland in terms of our ranking. Uh, so I always tell everybody like, oh, we probably are one of the best place to work with, right? In terms of happy people. So that is, a, uh, that is an overview of the company. As I explained uh, previously that we are a very culturally oriented organization. Uh, we have what we call the Bayada way. We do things differently. Um, we're just not to meet standard. We want to be above standard. We, 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 we want, because at the end of the day, our calling is to provide the best care for our patient. We don't want to be just a mediocre agency in, in the United States. So whenever we make decisions in what we do on a daily basis, we always have to base it on our values of compassion, excellence, and reliability. So um, when we have to make any decision, we say, is this decision made with compassion? Uh, are we trying, is this decision that we're doing is with excellence? Are we being reliable to our clients and to our coworkers and, and to our managers? I love this by the way. This is what fires us and keep the flame going and making sure that we do the right thing all the time. Amy, I think you're on mute. I have to do that once every every time. Um, it's my it's my one time. Ta talk to us a little bit about what this opportunity is specifically today. Um, you mentioned that it's for home health. But will you, will you give us some of the details? Right, absolutely. So for this specific setting at Bayada, uh, we are looking for nurses that will be working in a patient's home for about like 30 to 60 minutes and provide skilled services. When we say skilled services, it could be from managing the wounds, right, changing the dressing. It could be changing a Foley catheter. Because obviously only nurses can do that. Patient can do that sometimes. They can be trained, but only licensed nurses can do that. IV infusion is some of the examples that uh, we perform. Patients coming home from the hospital with IV antibiotics, and we have to train the family in how to administer it, watch out for side effects, et cetera, and a lot of education. The type of patients that we're seeing in the home are all, all homebound, right? Um, that's one of the criteria. Um, and it's a one-on-one -on -one care opportunity. Um, you'll be with your patient. You're not gonna be treating 10 patients at the same time. That's what I love about this job. It's really spending your uh, time and, and effort with taking care of one patient. Um, flexibility and schedule, oh my God. Uh, that's what attracts me for doing home health. You know, I, I schedule my own patients uh, within the week. Sometimes uh, I start at nine o'clock. Sometimes I started as early as eight if I want to and finish what I need to do at three o'clock because I have other errands to do personally. So the work-life balance is there, which it's not common if I work 12 hour shift every day for the next three days, right? Um, it's really perfect, especially for, let's say you have young kids as well. Uh, that you have to drop them off at school. You know, you can do that in between patients. If I work in a facility, I can just leave my post and say, I have to pick up my kids, right? Here, I'm just going to schedule my patients around my family schedule. And so if I decided to work on a weekend, great. If I decided to work Monday to Thursday only, wonderful. It's it's up to you. Obviously, it depends on on you want to be a full-time employee, right? But just in general, you make your own schedule. You, you, you can have that work-life balance that you will be looking for. And, and I'm sure a lot of you are listening and watching right now. One of the most important things that you want is to have that work-life balance as a nurse. You work in the hospital, you have 12-hour shift three days a week, right? 
or your, your work at night, midnight until six o'clock in the morning. Home health, you don't do that for this setting. <laughs> I'm sure your patient's not like, oh, don't see me, I'm sleeping, right? <laughs> in the home health setting too, just so you're aware, nothing here is emergency, nothing is urgent. Our patients are medically stable because if they're not, they should be in a different setting. So you as a nurse, the level of stress is totally different. You're not treating a super acute patient. This patient graduated in the hospital in a nursing facility because they're medically stable. We just wanna make sure that they don't go back to the hospital or to those facilities. So it sounds like this is an amazing opportunity because oh, yeah. it's for a great company, right? Where that has the opportunity for professional growth where you know, you can you can grow in your role and, and do all kinds of things. And somebody, you know, the next person that comes and joins Bayada may take Jericho's job as the in Hawaii. No, I'm kidding. Jericho knows. Yes, right. um, <laughs> and you get to be you get to be a nurse and take care of your one patient and not get stretched too thin if the, the hospital's busy or, or there's just not enough people on shift. Um, and you can also take care of your family all at the same time. Absolutely. So what what an amazing opportunity. Okay, so where where is this, Jericho? Where in the world can you go to do this job with Beata? What are the openings like right now? Right, right. Well, right now we are in dire need of um, nurses that are gems <laughs> in a couple of our states here in the United States. So we have Pennsylvania and Hawaii. Um, those are the two areas that we are really looking for nurses to, to place. Um, so what is life in Hawaii? Oh, I'm wearing my Aloha shirt. <laughs> it's like paradise, right? In Hawaii, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody knows Hawaii. Hawaii, we are about 1.5 million population and for those who are not aware we are we have multiple we have a handful of islands we're not just one island all right so we have uh, quite a handful of islands and three of those islands Bayada has offices so we have the big island office which where I live this is where the beautiful um, scenery of tropical and volcanoes and sea turtles and and, and everything paradise can offer. And we also have one in Oahu, that picture that with all those buildings that you see, that is in Waikiki area. So I'm pretty sure you've heard about Waikiki, one of the best beaches in the world, right? It's like working in paradise. I have clinicians that when we have a meeting, I was like, where are you guys? And they're just showing, I'm parked here at the beach. And that's where we're having our meeting via Zoom. Isn't that wonderful? The climate in Hawaii is, uh, all throughout the years the same. So I'll say in, in Fahrenheit, it's probably from 69 at night, 68, and then as high as maybe 80, 82, depending on the part of Hawaii. Now during the summer, it could be a little hotter, maybe 85 degrees, but hot, it's not hot here in Hawaii. It's like, it's the beach season all throughout the year. So in Fahrenheit, it's probably like maybe 25 degrees. Uh, so it ranges from 19 to 26 degrees in the centigrade. Our activities, obviously in Hawaii, there's so much scenery to see, a lot of beaches. Um, it's tropical. There are parts of Hawaii that it's like rainforest. I live in the rainforest side. It rains almost every day. You know, you, at night you hear all the frogs and it's, it's beautiful. The other thing too, there are no snakes in Hawaii. <laughs> there are no predators in Hawaii. So you are aware. So you can hike in here anytime, not worry about getting bitten by dangerous animals. So that is Hawaii. And the next one we have is Pennsylvania. Well, I, I did not live in Pennsylvania, but I live in Maryland. So we're not too far, right? It's pretty over there. It's all green, lush green mountains, about 13 million people. There's a lot of people there in, in Pennsylvania. What I love in Pennsylvania is the four seasons. So if you wanna see the, the color changing during the autumn, everything turning orange, it's, it's so beautiful. And then during the winter, you know, I've always prayed and wished when I was so little, like I'll see a white Christmas, right? 
me being born in the Philippines, we have the same season all throughout the year. And you see on TV, it's like, okay, it's snowing outside, it's Christmas. So it's 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 great to if you want that type of weather, enjoy the winter season. And, and if you like to try snowboarding, ah, that's the way to go. Uh, a lot of hills and valleys and forests in in Pennsylvania. The other thing that I love in Pennsylvania, every time I go there, is I go to all those historical sites. There's a lot of things to learn. It, it's beautiful how the state maintained those historical sites, and it's just a mecca for people who wants to learn more about the birth of the United States. And there's a lot of history in there. And those are the two states that we currently are in need of you guys. <laughs> Jericho wants you to choose Hawaii. Well, um, of course. <laughs> I, will say, I will say that the um, in Pennsylvania, the place that we're hiring for right now is Philadelphia, which is it's a big city. Um, and there's uh, there's lots of people in Philadelphia. It is not it's not rural. Um, it is close to Maryland and New Jersey. It's a driving distance to New York City. Um, but it is not 65 to 82 degrees all year round like Hawaii is. It does. It is. It is not. It is. It is different. But it is. It may not be paradise. Right. Right. Well, choose paradise if you're if you're choosing between. Yeah. <laughs> choose. He says choose paradise. <laughs> um, and if you are, we're going to talk a little bit about what it, like with the qualifications. But again, just a reminder: if you have questions, put them in the chat. And um, if this sounds good to you, please reach out to your recruiter and they will be happy to help you schedule an interview because we are scheduling interviews for Bayana right now. We have interviews scheduled through the rest of the year. So there are interview slots open right now. Um, in terms of what is required to be qualified to interview, of course, you have to pass the NCLEX exam. Um, and you can have taken it for any state. We have a great licensure team that can help you endorse it to the state that you get hired in. Um, but it's important that you have two years of hands-on experience in critical care, acute care, ICU, um, because these are the skills that you will need. This is an acute care RN position, like we've talked about before. And so those are the skills that you need. Um, I think also in the video they mentioned Bayata has really fantastic training. So, you know, if you have been working, let's say, as a med surge nurse and you want to learn in ICU um, and you want to learn how to put a track can help you with that part of your career development as well. But to interview, you do need to be in an acute care role today. Um, it's important to have good communication skills, right? When you're when you are uh, visiting with a patient um, or perhaps interacting with their family, those skills are are important. Um, and then you have to be willing to relocate to the U.S. and go through the immigration process. Um, so the process right now is taking about eighteen to twenty four months with retrogression. So um, you have to be ready when when the embassy calls you. You need to be ready to pack up your pack up and um, and head that way. You also want to watch the um, watch the visa bulletin every month and see how it changes because you know the U.S. government can speed up or slow down based on based on many factors. Um, and then I think also important is as as a home health nurse in this role, you do need to drive. And so um, and and honestly, in most cities in the U.S., like almost everyone who works in the U.S. has a car. Um, there are a handful of places where people take public transportation, but it is it is really rare and it, it would be important, um, especially as you create your own schedule, that you also have a car and a driver's license. So you would need to be prepared to um, to do that very quickly um, and and be able to to drive as well as start your job at the same time. And then I think import, also important is what what comes with this opportunity. And so um, so with this Bayada opportunity, um, Bayada sponsors the nurse, which means they pay the attorney fees and your immediate family members can be included on the petition. There's no extra cost to in include the immediate family members on the petition. And it's a card sponsorship. It's an EB3 visa. For, for the nurse and then everybody else on the on the petition, children 21. Um, airfare for 
nurse is included. Um, there is relocation assistance. Um, and we have a relocation team that will help you plan both temporary housing and help you find permanent housing, um, which all over the world could be a little tricky right now. <laughs> but we have a great team that can help you with all of that. And there's also reimbursement for your medical exam and your visa screen that comes once you arrive to the U.S. Uh, I mentioned the licensure support. So our team will help you with that. And we also have an English coach. Um, her name is Carrie Cooper. And just a plug for Carrie, if you have not gone to our Facebook page and followed worldwide, you should do that. Carrie does um, a live Facebook thing every Thursday called Carrie's Corner um, with tips on English exam. And um, she did a tour of Walmart. And so lots of other tips about living in the U.S. and getting prepared to move to the U.S. Um, and then all the support that Bayana gives, onboarding, we've talked about training. There's a great deal of clinical support that, and, and you're, although you are, it's a one-to-one -one and you are with a patient, you're never alone. There's a huge support team. I think Jericho mentioned, um, even as a nurse, considering the team and the, and the different resources that you have. Um, and then amazing career growth. Jericho's got a great story, but he's not the only one. Um, there's a reason that Bayada was voted um, one of the best companies for women in diversity because there's opportunity for lots of different people. And so it's amazing company. It's a big company and a growing company. Um, home health is the fastest growing industry in the U.S. in the health field. And so um, it is it is the future of healthcare in the U.S. And so it's a, it's an amazing opportunity. Um, what did I miss, Jericho, that we should add about why this is a great opportunity? I think you covered most. Uh, I think you covered everything. I just want to add that in terms of the education, uh, to, to Amy's uh, point, you will get the necessary training that you need. We're just not going to throw you out there in the walls. I personally do the onboarding for our new hires. That is my primary job. So I'll make sure that we guide you through and give you the necessary exposure. You'll have a preceptor in the field as well. Someone will be with you from your, you know, from shadowing, from your first patient to your documentation. Because I know that will be one of the things that you probably like, oh my God, you know, this is a new country, a lot of different culture in here, a new company, a new setting for me. There's a lot of new things. I've been there. I know how hard it is for someone who is moving to another country and everything is new. And so we want to make we want to make sure that you are aware that we'll take good care of you. We are going to guide you through your onboarding. Uh, our, our onboarding is actually 90 days and our support is forever. <laughs> so we're not expecting you to be a, like at the first week you have all this number of patients. No, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I bet you that's not going to happen. Any part of Beata, that's not going to happen because we believe that your success is ours and ours is yours. So we want to make sure we provide you the training that you need and that, and that all the competencies that you need to feel confident when you're out there. I love also when you say about the opportunities for career growth. Yes, it's not only me. Uh, I have clinicians. We have clinicians that start in the field. Now they're division directors. Now they are the director of clinical operations somewhere and clinical education. They are preceptors now. So um, it may, it, it, you can go on different parts of Bayada too, right? Not just home health. There's pediatrics. There's hospice. There's a lot of opportunity. But we need you first in the home health. <laughs> so that's right. First, first this job, then the other one, right? I mean, like that's how you know. And I think I think one of the things that I and, and Jerrica mentioned this. One of the things about the U.S. is there is a lot of opportunity um, for personally for me. One of the things that I found in my personal career, not as a nurse, I'm only a recruiter, but um, is that working for a company that has a lot of opportunity in different jobs is an amazing way to get opportunity and you can prove yourself. Um, and you have then once you prove yourself and you've shown that you're working hard and that you have what it takes, then it's easier to move in the same company up into different roles. 
um, rather than try to move into a different role at a different company. Right. And so going to a company like Beata that that believes in investing in their in their folks and really wants to promote from within is is a great way if you're if you are interested in you know and growing your career and to be things outside of you know a, a, a nurse and to be an educator or to run a region or to do any of the other things if those if that's in your future a company like Bayada is a great way to do that. Absolutely. All right, so um, if they, if you have questions, please please put them in the chat. We also have live recruiters available to chat right now. So if you want to talk to a recruiter, um, you are welcome to, to go online and you can get you can get to them through this link or you can always chat with a recruiter on our website or through our Facebook page. Um, just want to mention that I, I said this earlier about Carrie's Corner, but follow us and like us on Facebook. Um, we do webinars all the time. For all kinds of different things, um, we will keep you up to date on retrogression. Um, we will keep you up to date on what's going on. If you are wondering where in the world Ron Hoppy might be, he's been on a world tour in our 25 years and 25th year. He's been to lots and lots of different countries, and he's in the Middle East right now. So follow us on Facebook to keep up to date on all the things that are happening at Worldwide. And then if you have a nurse friend that you think might be interested, um, please feel free to refer them. We have an amazing program. We pay out our referral fee at the time your friend's petition is approved. So um, this is a long journey. Don't go on out alone and get paid for bringing your friends with you. Um, and then if you have not applied, Please go to our website and apply, and we're, we will get you connected directly with a recruiter. Um, we have an amazing recruiting team. Um, please tell them that you're interested in interviewing for Bayada, and we will be happy to make sure that your qualifications are, are the right fit for that. And then you can say that you want to be with Jericho in Hawaii, and we will get you an interview with the right, with the right Hawaii people. Um, okay, so I've seen a couple of questions that come through. I think... One of them is about work schedule, and you talked about this a little bit, but what is the typical schedule, Jericho, for nurses um, that are working in home health? Like, What does that look like, generally speaking? Right. So for this setting, this home health setting particularly, it is one-on-one. -one. That's number one. It's a one-on-one -one ratio. And then you schedule your own patient with your, you know, whatever day you want, as long as the patient agrees. So typically our clinicians loves to work Monday to Friday. We, we want our weekends, right? Um, they, some of them starts as late as nine o'clock in the morning or some as early as seven, just depending in, again, their, their personal goal for that day. Like I have kids, I have to pick them up at four o'clock. So I'm gonna work early on every Monday. Um, patients, number of patients in the day, I'll say typically average maybe five patients in a day. It just depends on um, how um, the type of cases you're taking. Usually they're like between 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Certain cases you'll probably be about an hour and 30 minutes. Rarely we spend two hours on a regular treatment session for our patient because you're going to be there. Take the vitals of the patient, look at your plan, right, and do the appropriate interventions and then education, and then you leave. And, then, and basically that's it, on to your next patient. Uh, so this is not like, um, like I have 10 patients in one hour. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah. You'll be paying and your Somebody asked what the patient ratio is. So will you remind us what the, what the patient yeah, ratio is? Definitely one on one. <laughs> that's your ratio. One is to one. That's why I love this uh, this setting because you can spend a whole hour really sitting down with your patient and the family and caregiver, addressing their concerns, treating, providing interventions, taking your time. I remember when I used to work in a facility where and I have 12 patients that I have to see in an eight hour job. And I have all 12 documentation that I have to do after that as well. And sometimes juggling the time is so difficult. But here, one-on-one -on -one. and then if i have five patients and i decided to start my day at eight o'clock i may be done by three or four o'clock or 
just depends on how I, how my day I want my day looks like, basically. Yeah. And I think too. I mean, my perspective. I'm certainly not clinical, but um, I had a parent who was ill. And um, we did all the things. We went to the hospital, we went to rehab center. Um, and I'll say ha having somebody who came to support my dad in the home where he was comfortable made such a huge difference just to me as a family member, because I, and I, I think Jericho mentioned this before, um, it was where he was most comfortable. He was less anxious. Um, we didn't have to wait for his meds to come at times that like may not have been the right time for him because the nurses had to give out so many meds because um, his condition required medicine at very specific times. And um, it was just so impactful. And so I think this is not every nurse makes a difference. But as somebody who had, a, you know, a, a chronically and critically ill family member who was able to be treated at home, it's a it's a huge gift. And so I think there's there's a special calling for nurses that that do this work, um, and it's there's so many other benefits, but it's it's also an amazing way to give back to patients and their family members. Um, there's a question about like how many hours? What is it? Like what's a normal full time like hourly work schedule during the week? Right, right. So it will be a little different in our setting. Um, well, particularly for Beata, the way we um, categorize a patient and the number of hours you work with is the type of visit you make. So for example, um, if I am going to open a case, it's a new case that I'm admitting in the home health setting, Beata will, it, that visit is equivalent to a certain points, we call it a point system. I know it might be a little confusing now, but it's a point system that we do. It's not the number of patients you see in a week that determines how many hours you work in a week. It's the type of visit you do. So when if I'm doing a start of care or I'm admitting a patient and that's equivalent to 2.5 points, you might be spending about two hours on that first visit because it's a new patient. You're doing a lot of assessment, a lot of interview with your patient, but it's equivalent to what we call a 2.5 points. A regular visit, like if I just go there, take the vitals of the patient and do the wound care, spend 30 minutes, that's a point, right? So a biota for us, a full time may be from 25 points to 30 points in a week. So at 25 points, let's say I do two patients that are new, our start of care, that's two patients, that's five points in Monday. If I do two new patients on Tuesday, that's another five points. I already have 10 points. Right? So by the time I hit 25 points on a Friday, that's just like 10 patients, right? So it's not, it's not really like the number of hours you have to work in a day. It's the type of points, uh, type of visits you do. So some clinicians will have, you know what? I wanna have a light day today. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take three patients. One is a start of care, which is a 2.5, and two are just regular visits, just one point. So that's 4.5 how many hours did I spend? Probably four hours, because a regular visit can range from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, right? Even your start of care can range from an hour to two hours. So it just depends on the severity of the case that you're handling. But otherwise, I can say my experience when I was a full time in the field, I'll probably spend about at least six hours in a day. That includes my driving. Right, because I have to drive from one patient to another. But how many patients did I see for that day? Maybe five patients, and I'm done. So it, it, it's all about also finding your your niche. Uh, when you start in, in, just like in any se setting, right? When you're new in your job, it probably will take longer than usual because you're learning your job. But once you know the ropes and, and the documentation, it's even faster to finish a day work. Six hours is better than 12 hours, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> um, one, I see one more question here. Somebody um, asked, Charles asked if, um, if you're Nigerian, is there an opportunity? And, you know, I'll say in almost any country 
in the world, we can help you um, as long as you qualify for this, which is you have to have the NCLEX and you have to be currently working um, in bedside nursing and acute care. So those are the those are really the biggest things. Um, but we help people here worldwide from countries all over the world, including Nigeria. In fact, we have we had um, people from worldwide in Ghana just last week. So not not too terribly far away. Um, and we we do help nurses from all over the world. So there's, um, you know, if you are from the Philippines, we're happy to help you. But if you're from any other country, we're happy to help you as well. So that's a that's a great question. Um, so I think that's all the questions. Um, maybe just a couple of final thoughts. Anything, any last things, Jericho, you would like to share with with the attendees? Right. Um, I just want to share to them that. Um, there's a lot of opportunities in the United States, and particularly with Beata. Um, there is, as we are aware, worldwide uh, shortage of professionals, especially nurses. We have a lot of patients that need care, and we need you. Um, just make sure that you do your due diligence in, in researching about the company. I can vouch for Beata. As I said, I've been with Beata for almost eight years. I've been with Beata in four different states and grew myself within the company with a lot of opportunities and training. So um, I wish everybody all the best. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll definitely assist you in your transition here in the United States. Thank you so much, Jericho. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your future help for all the Beata employees of Hawaii that you will help onboard. Um, and thank you to all the attendees who took time to join us today. We appreciate you and we look forward to, to hearing from you soon. Bye, everybody. Good evening, good afternoon, or good night. Bye. Thank you.